Strangely, when it began, it wasn't a virus at all, and the victims didn't cough up bloody sputum or leak viscous fluid from their eyes. They didn't sneeze violently or break out in a fevered sweat. They didn't even go red in the face. Perhaps if they had shown these symptoms, we would have known how to react. We could have done something. But as it was, we didn't even try. Steve woke slowly, his muddled thoughts clambering over each other in their rush to be heard. He rubbed his eyes with the palms of his hands, sloughing off the crust of dead skin and dried mucus. He blinked and squinted up at the ceiling. Christ, he muttered. Where the hell am I? He ran his hands over his body. He was naked, his skin sticky with dried sweat. Wow, he must have got lucky with some girl. He couldn't remember. What the hell had he been drinking last night? He closed his eyes and remembered the cheers as he drained yet another shot of tequila. He clutched at the bedclothes and pulled himself into a sitting position. A vicious bubble of gas gurgled and forced its way out of his stomach and up his esophagus. A belch brought the bitter taste of rotting apples to the back of his throat. He gagged and his guts squirmed as if they were trying to escape from his body. Oh God, he moaned. He swung his feet onto the floor and stumbled to the door. Where the hell was the bathroom? Across the landing, a door stood ajar. Inside, a light was on and an extractor fan whirred. That must be the bathroom. But was it occupied? He'd have to risk it. He pushed the door open and that was when he saw her. The girl lay face down on the floor, her arms and legs splayed awkwardly on the cold tiles. Her face was turned to one side and a puddle of white gelatinous vomit glistened on the floor below her mouth. Steve stared, his eyes wide in horror. Who the hell was that? A brutal cramp shuddered through his abdomen and the floor swayed beneath his feet. He staggered to the sink and threw up noisily, emptying his stomach over and over again until his retching did nothing but burn his throat and make his eyes water. He spat into the sink and turned the cold tap on, washing the worst of it away. He'd clean it up later. Maybe. He splashed cold water on his face and rinsed his mouth out. That's better, he murmured. He lifted his head, wiped his mouth and looked in the mirror. And screamed. The girl stood behind him. Her face, reflected in the mirror, was deathly pale and her eyes glittered with a savage greed. Steve whirled around, almost losing his footing as his bare feet skidded on the smooth floor. The girl bared her teeth in a cruel parody of a smile, and long threads of drool dribbled from the corners of her mouth. Steve backed away, fumbling for the door handle. Too late. She strode forwards and grabbed his arms, pressing him back against the wall. Christ, she was strong! Steve opened his mouth to shout for help, but she clamped her lips on his, pushing her cold tongue against his and breathing out hard, forcing her spent air into his mouth. And with it came countless millions of microscopic spores. They flooded into his lungs and coated the inside of his mouth. They stuck to his spit and he swallowed them down, down into the moist, warm places of his body. Steve gathered his strength and struggled from her grip, getting his hands free and planting them firmly on her chest, pushing her away. She stumbled back, her arms flailing as she lost her balance, and Steve ran from the room, slamming the door behind him. He dashed back into the bedroom. Thank God, his clothes were on the floor by the bed. He bundled them in his arms and thudded down the stairs. He pulled his jeans on, stepped into his shoes and opened the door. As he stepped out into the street, he pulled his t-shirt over his head. Then, still straining his clothes, he strode away as fast as he could. It was a cold morning, and the fresh air and exercise revived him. By the time he was halfway home, his heart rate had slowed to something like normal, and he'd had time to think. The girl must have been on something, maybe speed. They'd been a bad batch doing their own, so his mates had said. Crazy bitch. 
He shook his head in disbelief. Can't wait to tell the guys, he thought. They'll be in hysterics. He laughed to himself. It was too good a story to keep to himself. Maybe, maybe he could catch up with his mates in the cafe. There was a place in the high street that did a great cooked breakfast, a perfect cure for a hangover, and come to think of it, he was starving. He changed direction and ran across the road, dodging between the speeding cars. A couple of drivers sounded their horns and someone hurled abuse at him. But Steve just laughed. He didn't give a damn. He felt great. He felt alive. He jogged along the high street to the cafe and peered in through the steamed up windows. Great. The gang were all in there, huddled over their huge mugs of coffee. And a couple of the girls had tagged along too, Debs and Nicky. Even better. When Steve marched in, the boys raised their heads and greeted him with jeers and cheers. Steve grinned and pulled up a chair. He grabbed Dave's coffee and took a slurp and joined the look on his friend's face. He smiled at Debs and gave Nicky a sly wink. Damn, but they were looking good this morning. And they both smiled back. He must be on a lucky streak. Oh, man, he said. Have I got a story to tell you? Inside Steve's body, the spores swelled as they absorbed his fluids. They began to germinate, releasing a cocktail of chemicals that mimicked his endorphins. And as the fungal cells grew and multiplied, their enzymes seeped into Steve's soft tissues, breaking them down, turning them into pulp. The fungus fed on his flesh, sending out its thread-like mycelia to creep slowly through organs and eat into bones. And all the while, Steve lived every day to the absolute max. He'd never felt so alive, so buzzing with sexual confidence. For fifteen days, it was fantastic. And then, one morning, he woke up on the floor and he didn't know where he was or how he got there. It looked like he puked up on the carpet. He wiped the sticky threads of white vomit from his mouth and pushed himself up to his feet. And as he stood and swayed, the door opened and a frightened face peered into the room. He didn't recognise her, but it didn't matter. It didn't matter at all. Steve smiled. She looked delicious. Well, thank you for taking the time to uh, watch and listen. Uh, I'm Mikey Campling. You can find uh, stories like this and all kinds of other things at my site, mikeycampling.com. You can uh, grab hold of me uh, on Twitter, at Mikey Campling, and I'm on Facebook and everywhere else, which you can find from my website, mikeycampling.com. And if you sign up for a newsletter there, you can have stories like this um, exclusively for you, plus a, a free copy of my uh, suspense novella, Breaking, Breaking Ground, which is a cram full of suspense and full of surprises, uh, and is uh, available from my website and also on Amazon and uh, all good uh, online retailers. So thank you very much.